Okay, the first example in the Boost multi-index library documentation is the employee example, um, which I think, I mean, it's a very simple example, but it's very succinct, and I think it ex illustrates the use of the multi-index and the necessity for the multi-index very well. Um, so I guess let's just dive right into it. Um, they, what they've done is they've defined this struct employee struct and it has an ID and a name and they've also overloaded the boolean operator the less than boolean operator um, which seems to indicate that you would want to order these employees based on their ID right usually when you overload that kind of operator it's so you can toss it into a set or a priority queue or something and have them naturally ordered for you you don't have to write any extra methods or anything like that and in fact that's what they're saying here that's what they're planning on doing um, and that's all well and good. Like no, that, no surprises here. If you toss these employees into a set, you're going to have them ordered as you'd expect. What shows the necessity for this multi-index, the use case for this multi-index data structure is: let's say you wanted to order these employees based alphabetically based on their name as well, not just not either or, but both. You wanted to order them based on name, but you also wanted to order them based on the ID, right? Well. Back when I was a competitive programmer, when I was writing the majority of my C++, I probably would have just tossed these into a priority queue and then passed in like a comparator class and had them ordered on name and then used either a set for the ID and then another set for the name or something like that. Um, or maybe a vector and then sorted the vector. You know, there's a bunch of different ways of handling this. But it's obviously bad for, uh, for as far as space complexity goes, right? Because you're storing the same data twice in two different data structures unnecessarily. Um, the point that they, the other thing they point out here is like, okay, you could do it as a secondary set of data structures and then use those to index into the original set. So you have two different ways of looking at the same data. And I think like essentially that's kind of what the multi-index is doing for you. It, it's abstracting all of that crap out of out of the way so you don't have to concern yourself with it and you can still get two different ways of looking at the same data and the same data structure um, so what essentially with that that being said what I've done is I've taken this example that they've um, they're supplying and I coded it up myself and even gave it a couple of little example employees to mess around with so we could kind of see how this data structure uh, behaves so let's uh, look at the code for that right now so in this employees.cpp, the bottom one, you can see where my mouse is moving. Uh, what I've done is I've essentially just defined the multi-index exactly the same way they did. Here I'm, uh, oh, I've also defined the employee, right? So I have the employee, I have the multi-index, and I'm telling it that we're going to store employees in it. And then here is how you define the multi-index uh, views or interfaces, whatever you want to call them. We have this index by, and in there you can pass a list of different um, Indices, I guess if you want to call them that. I can't remember what they call them in the documentation. Hold on a second. Index, yeah, so they call them indices. So you have this these indices. Um, in this case, we're ordered unique and we're passing an identity, identity employee. Um, this essentially treats it as if it's a set. If you have this less than operator already defined, you can define an indice in this way. Um, it's going to be unique. The employees are going to be unique on the ID in this case. And then here we have ordered non-unique, meaning you can have any number of um, employee names and they're sorted on less than uh, is the default parameter when you don't pass in one. So in this case, we're going to have the employee names sorted for us as well, as I said before, but also we're going to uh, allow uh, multiple of the same employee name in the set. So that's how you define the multi-index. And down here, I'm just creating the multi-index and then inserting a bunch of different names and IDs just to kind of show you kind of uh, how this data structure is going to respond to this data that I'm passing in. So I've passed in a bunch of kind of like different edge cases in order to prove out, you know, different aspects of this data structure. So in this case, uh, I created Bob and I created Susan. Uh, if we printed these out, it would be exactly the same but with a set or a multi-index, right? It doesn't matter. They would both because they're both unique in the ID and uh, they would be printed out, you know, one, two, Bob, and then Susan. Uh, then I tried to insert Bob again. Uh, in this case, again, they would be printed out much the same way uh, between a set. Then I tried adding Bob with Susan's ID 
just to prove that case out. Um, another thing I did is I tried adding Bob with a different ID to see how it responded to that. Then I tried adding Alice to Bob's ID as well, and then finally I added Alice as a completely unique entity in the in the code. So if we compile this, that's the right one. Well, you can see I've already printed this out. So you'll, you're kind of getting a teaser. You already know what's going to happen here. Um, so what we do here is I call print out by name here these two functions passing in the employees multi index. So if we go up here and see what we're doing here in the print out by name, what we're doing is we're getting the the second index that we defined up here. So the way you you get these interfaces into the data that you that you're interested in is they're given kind of as a list, right? So in this case, it's the zeroth index if I wanted to look based on the IDs, and it's the one, the one, the first index if I uh, wanted to get by name. In this case, I I'm saying okay, I want to get by name, so I'm passing in one as the parameter, and that's giving me a, an insight into the data based on employee names, which means they're not going to be unique, and they're not going to, um, and they're going to be sorted based on name. So if, if we look here. Uh, I am printing out by name and they are in alphabetic order, right? You'll notice they're in alphabetic order and not numeric order, right? Alice comes before Bob and since we've inserted Bob twice, if we look down here, we inserted Bob twice so we're seeing Bob show up twice with two different um, IDs. One thing to note here though is Alice isn't showing up twice. Why isn't Alice showing up twice? Well, because we also have the the constraint of enforcing uniqueness on the IDs. So if you try and add Alice to the same ID as Bob, right, she's only going to be added once. Because if it, let's say we tried to do this without adding her again, when we try to print out the names in that regard, there Alice isn't going to show up at all because the the ID uniqueness is still enforced when when we're looking at this like the underlying data that we're still looking at here is, is the same data like it's essentially the same set right it's again it's just a different way of looking at the set we go oh, okay now we want to see it in alphabetic order well we're not going to change the underlying data structure we still have to enforce uniqueness in IDs but um, we're able to look at the data in alphabetic order as well in this case um, so that's one aspect of looking at them in names, uh, in the name using the name index, the name interface, whatever you want to call it. Um, what what other aspects here? Again, as as I said, we got to insert Bob twice, but you'll see Bob didn't get inserted. Well, it looks like we tried to insert Bob four times, right? And it didn't work. In, it only worked in two cases, and those are the two cases where Bob's ID was unique, one and four. So there, it said, okay, we can add Bob for one and four and it got sorted in uh, name order. So essentially, if we print them out by ID, which I'm doing here, uh, sorry, right here you can see I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm making the exact same call as I did when I wanted to print them in name order. The only difference is I passed in zero to the template parameter, meaning I wanted to use this index to view the data rather than this index. And we're getting exactly the same data again here, right? Like there's no, there's no, the, the data isn't stored twice here. It's just different ways of looking at the data. In this case, we see Bob is printed out first because his index, his ID is is one. It's the lowest ID of uh, all the other all the other employees in the set. Um, so obviously, this is super power, super super powerful. Um, what I did here is I just kind of said, okay, you know, how would I, how would I, oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. So up here we enforce the. Um, that the name could be non-unique, right? If we did this, so now now the name does have to be unique. Let's see what happens. And you can see Bob doesn't show up twice again, regardless of his ID, right? So you can enforce uniqueness or non-uniqueness. We could have done the same thing here. We could have made this non-unique, and then uh, you, Bob could have been added twice with the, the ID 2, or sorry, the ID 1. Alice could have taken the ID 1 as well as we tried to show here. We would have allowed that. Um, okay, anyway, what I was saying is, uh, I, I what I did is I, I showed you how I would have kind of tried to handle this if I was doing it in like a competition or something like that. Uh, what, I've what I did here is I 
take this took the exact same employee I gave it the same operator overloading because as I said the first index is no different than a set it really is no different and what we did is we made the same insert statements into that ID set but now okay I want to look at the the set from a name perspective right oh, that's still doable what I did here is I overloaded the the parentheses operator and that allowed me to pass that into the set and say okay now I want to order them as names right and I could do that and but I have to insert that into a second set as well right and then print them out in the same way uh, if we compile this one what do they call that? employees 2 I think Oops. and print that out we get the same data that we were getting before um, printing versus ID versus name, um, but we have to store the same data twice. Um, part of the reason I did this is to show like, okay, the space complexity is not very good for this, but also kind of to show you um, just what what exactly these indices are doing, what they're kind of giving you is this way of defining these two different uh, comparison functions, I guess you could say. Okay, so that's a good... Uh, introduction to the multi-index. Um, we'll just keep chunking through the, the documentation and you can kind of just stop watching the videos as you start to feel more and more comfortable with the multi-index. Um, part of the reason I'm, I'm recording this section is I want to reference for myself when I start writing smart contracts. I want to be able to reference back and go, oh yeah, this, uh, this data I'm trying to store on the blockchain is very similar to the employee thing that I did. So maybe I'll take that same code and change it slightly or something like that. Uh, okay, uh, I'll see you in the next video. We'll just keep going through the documentation. Thanks.